Hi, I'm Francois from adventurebikegroup.com and in this video we're going to compare the Husqvarna Norden 901 with six of its closest rivals. Now I've picked six twin cylinder mid to large sized adventure bikes that most closely resemble the Norden 901. We're looking at price, size, uh, power and we're going to see where the Norden fits on the scale. Now obviously if you are deciding to buy a bike, the best thing that you can do is to go ride all the bikes. I've been riding the Norden 901 for the last two weeks thanks to KTM South Africa that lent me the bike. Now the best you can do is go sit on all the bikes, ride all the bikes and decide which one makes you feel the best. But as a starting point to screen the bikes, it is sometimes helpful to look at the specs and that's what we are going to do in this video. Now the bikes I chose to compare the Norden 901 with is the first obvious one is the KTM 890 Adventure R. I chose the R because the price of the Adventure R is much closer to the Norden 901. The normal Adventure or Adventure S is quite a bit cheaper. So the 890 Adventure R was a close to arrival. They do share the same engine, the same platform, the same chassis, the same electronics. So it is the closest rival. Then we've got the BMW 850 GS Adventure. Again, I chose the Adventure model because uh, again, the price is much closer to the Norden 901. Then the Yamaha T7, there's lots of comparisons on the two. Um, it's two of the newer adventure bikes on the market. Uh, so I chose the T7, it's quite a bit cheaper than the Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro. So that's the most aggressive, the, the coolest of the Tigers. Um, and again, price wise, it was fairly close. And then the new Ducati Desert X. If we look at price, the Norden 901 is actually good value for money compared to the rivals. It's only the T7 that is cheaper, but the T7 offers way less in terms of uh, technology, uh, power, suspension, brakes. So it's obvious that it's cheaper, but then the BMW 850GSA is a little bit cheaper, but that is the base model. And you'll have to add quite a bit uh, to get up to the specs of the standard Northern 901. If we look at power, this is where the Norden really does well. It shares the same 889cc engine that you get on the KTM 890s. Um, it delivers 105 horsepowers and 100 newton meters torque. So that is only trumped by the Ducati Desert X in terms of horsepower, which delivers 110 horsepower. But in terms of torque, it's the 890 and this Norden 901 that delivers the most torque. And this motor is just amazing. In any gear, um, eh, you can just open the throttle and it moves. Now we all know weight is important on a bike that you're going to take off the tarmac. And this is where the Norden is. Well, it's close to the bottom, uh, top being the lightest, the Yamaha T7, which is also the smallest with the smallest engine. But if you look at the figures, it's very close. I mean, there's not much in it. Some of these I had to calculate using wet weight. These are dry weights. I had to use wet weights and deduct the fuel and some oil. So the Norden comes in at 204 kilograms. That's without fuel. Um, but it's so close that it's only really the Yamaha T7 that is much lighter. And then the BMW is heavier. It is a heavy bike and it depends on um, which specs you read. A lot of these specs are very difficult to find consistent figures on. So um, anyways, the, the Norden is, it's basically on par with most of the other bikes in this class. But uh, like I said in my video of the seven things that I love about the Norden, it feels a lot like a lighter thanks to that low center of gravity due to the fuel tanks that's hanging low down, similar to the KTM 890. Tank size. So here again, it's quite close. The tanks are these ones quite low down. Um, and if we look at the specs, it's one of the smaller tanks, but again, it's so close. The BMW is the biggest one. That's the adventure model has 23 liters, but then it's 21, 20, 20 and 19. So all of them except the T7 basically have a 20 liter fuel tank and the Norden is one liter less. But like I said, again, in my video on the seven things I love about the Norden, it's so economical. You can almost, if you, if you are careful, do 500 kilometers or 300 miles on a tank of petrol, which is awesome. Seat height is often a problem for riders. Anything below six feet really struggle to get their feet um, flat on the floor. 
and the BMW really shines here. The, you, uh, and these figures and the stats that I quote here are without loading links. So these are just the different seats and seat heights, the options. So you can see the BMW has quite a wide range of seat heights. Um, and then Norden is really is, is second there. So you can get it anything down from 853 millimeters to 874. So it does make quite a difference. I've been switching back and forth between the low and the higher setting. It's super easy. You just use the key, uh, remove the back seat, uh, move the front seat forward, and then replace the back seat. And it's as easy as that. Um, the Triumph can also adjust a bit. Um, and then the others are you know, fairly uh, fixed. Um, so the Norden, it does make a difference. If you're riding technical stuff, it's nice in the lower one, the lower setting. And then on the highway, um, standing up, you have more leg room if you put it on the higher setting. So, and it is a super comfortable seat, this. Now, suspension is very difficult to objectively measure. Um, on the Norden 901, you get three-way adjustability on the front, two ways at the back. So it's, it's good, the suspension, the WP Apex. It's not the same as the WP Explorer on the 890 Adventure or KTM. It's the normal KTM 890, um, but it's still very good. You can actually jump the bike. It doesn't feel like you're destroying the suspension. Um, go check out my video uh, where I chat about the things I love about the Norden 901. So what I looked at was suspension travel and there the Norden is close to last. It's only the Yamaha T7 that has less suspension travel, but even jumping this heavy bike, landing it, it doesn't feel like you're destroying the suspension um, over any type of road that I threw it at. Uh, through at it, it just felt super comfortable. It soaked up all the little bumps um, and on the tar road, if you hit potholes, it doesn't feel like it's going to be unsettled at all. So the suspension is more than enough and more than capable of handling a heavy bike like this. Um, so this is something that you really have to go and try for yourself. And for my weight, I didn't even play around with the settings. Um, I felt that the suspension is good enough. It would have been nice with the WP Explorer from the 890 Adventure R, but that would have made it quite a bit more expensive and probably the same price as the 890 Adventure R. So I'm actually quite happy with the suspension. Now I couldn't find reliable ground clearance figures for all the bikes, but for the ones that I did find, the Norden 901 is actually quite good. It's the second best after, you guessed it, the 890 Adventure R, the KTM. Um, but yeah, I never actually hit anything um, as I rode over uh, rocks and ruts and holes. So the ground clearance is great. This bike is actually very good off-road. Um, I felt, for instance, much more comfortable than the Suzuki V-Strom 1050 XT that I tested last year. You're going to go check out the playlist on that. Um, this bike actually felt like something that you want to take on the dirt roads over rocky sections, sand, jumps even, sliding around. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a fun bike. Anyways, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about uh, these bikes, which one your, is your favorite. Let me know if I left anything out. Um, and if you have any questions on the Norden 901, go check out my playlist on the bike and then I'll see you next week.